Hello, and welcome to What the Tech from Boast AI, where we talk with some of the brilliant minds behind new and exciting tech initiatives to learn what it takes to tackle technological uncertainty and eventually change the world. Today, I am thrilled to welcome to the show Ian McCarter, the Director of Corporate Innovation at Mars Discovery District. Mars is the world's largest urban innovation hub. Based in Toronto and operating since 2015, Mars supports startups in the health, clean tech, fintech, and enterprise sectors that are reshaping cities around the world. Standing at the forefront of a wave of change that extends from Melbourne to Amsterdam and across the entire globe. In Ian's role, he's focused on creating meaningful economic relationships between Canadian ventures and globally significant early adopters of innovation. In particular, Ian has been helping energy, mobility, real estate, mining, construction, and heavy industry partners inject Canadian innovation into their net zero journey. I'm excited to pick Ian's brain on what it takes to drive innovation in the current market, dig into what urban innovation looks like, and in particular, how important community, in its many definitions, is to building a successful, innovative business in 2024. So without further ado, welcome to the show, Ian. Hello, nice uh, nice to meet you, and I'm uh, really excited for the conversation today. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. I know that we were chatting off camera both earlier today and last week about how I see Mars everywhere. I've been on a bit of a road show over the past year since I joined Boston. I'm just thinking back to at SAS North at Elevate. You guys are on the scene. And so many of our guests actually have been part of what you guys do over at Mars. But before we dive into the Mars mission, I want to learn a bit more about Ian. So Ian, tell me, how did you get into the space in the first place? And maybe what of your particular passions that really made this a good fit for you over at Mars? Yeah, I, th- I think I think particularly uh, well for myself as as you mentioned off the top, I I lead sort of our corporate innovation uh, work here at Mars, and so that that's really all about accelerating the adoption of of early stage technology. I think particularly here in Canada, you'll often hear uh, we we don't have an innovation problem, we have an adoption problem, and so I I think that's really where I get fired up about is is. Uh, how do how do we actually take these innovations that are coming out of universities that are coming out uh, from across Canada, and how do we actually commercialize them and make them into uh, full fledged companies, and and so that's that's really where as as you mentioned off the top in whether it's clean tech or I we we might get into uh, today around active mobility, um, it's it's really these areas of how we can actually help uh, these companies grow and scale. Absolutely love it. So I'd love to know a little bit too. I had mentioned it in the intro a little bit too, but urban innovation. Now, what are we talking about specifically when we're saying urban innovation in the context of the businesses that you work with at Mars? Because from my understanding, you are not pigeonholed at all in the innovation that your teams are driving. In fact, you had mentioned it, active mobility. I want to go deep on that, but when I hear that, I don't instinctually think, oh, okay, in urban setting, we need to improve all of that. Unpack that for me. Yeah, to- totally. I think I think what's unique about Mars is that we uh, it, there there are many types of innovation hubs around the world, um, but many of them are located in these areas that aren't right you know right in the downtown core of of a major city, and so that that speaks to the community that we have in this sort of uh, core place for innovation is right next to us are a bunch of research hospitals, for example. Across the street is the um, the government uh, legislature, the provincial government legislature. We're a couple of uh, blocks away from Bay Street, uh, which is uh, the main financial sector. And so we're really at the epicenter of where innovation happens from government, from startups uh, and uh, venture capital and other capital providers. So that's what makes uh, that urban innovation, uh, uh, very unique to Mars compared to other uh, incubators or accelerators that that may not have this full community wrapped around it. Absolutely. So I'm going to call back to one of those events that I had mentioned earlier, but I remember at Elevate Fest, I was so impressed at how many members of your team were there, but also, like you said, the resources across the immediate Toronto community and just immediately in Canada. I think you raise a really good point that If you place your accelerator geographically or your incubator in an area where there's just going to be organic interactions, no matter what, because you're physically near where the innovation is happening, you're near those research institutes. I'm even just thinking, I don't want to get ahead of myself, the quantum of it all and how that's all happening outside of Toronto. And it's bigger there than anywhere in the world. 
That makes so much sense as kind of a driver. And again, to your mission specifically around driving teams towards net zero and clean tech, I can only imagine that you can only do that when you're in a setting where you're not having to travel super far or necessarily burn carbon. It's kind of baked into that net zero mission. So that is really, really cool to hear. Now, I'd love to talk about some of the projects that you're working on. We named Active yep. Mobility. Uh, could you explain a little bit about what you mean in that and maybe tee up some guests we're about to have on the show in a few weeks who are yep. in that market and I'm really excited to talk to you. Totally. Yeah. So so even just uh, picking up on your point uh, previously about the, the place where we are, like we we have uh, just over one and a half million square feet of, uh, of real estate downtown uh, here in Toronto. And again, it has all of those different elements within the building here, which which makes it quite unique. But but I think um, and, and where I work personally is with a lot of our large corporate partners. These are large multinational organizations. My team, we work with about 30 different partners across the world, and they see uh, Toronto as a, a place for, for innovation, whether it's to net zero or whether it's around adopting AI uh, uh, technologies. It's really that, that center where they can come to a major uh, you know, North American city and, and meet with all of these uh, uh, different types of entities in one place. And so we 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 do that very often with our our large multinational uh, uh, partners. One of which is 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 one that that you were alluding to, which is around Toyota. Um, and we've been working with uh, the Toyota Mobility Foundation on exactly just that. Um, we we started a, a project with them. I want to say just over a year now. Um, which, uh, you know, when you think about Toyota, you think about the car manufacturing and things like that. But we've, we've been working more with their foundation uh, side all around a term called active mobility. It, that's really focused on helping individuals uh, lead a more independent life. It, these are a bunch of different types of technologies that, that, we, would, um, that we would consider in that space. Think about accessibility technology for persons with disabilities. Think about uh, uh, assistive devices, for example, that that, that can help uh, from that uh, perspective. Or think about rehabilitation technology for whether it's persons with disabilities, or if you think in our lifetime, we may be in a, a car accident or things like that where we're, we're temporarily um, not mobile. And so it's really focused on how do we enable people to lead a more active lifestyle. And, and so we started a partnership with them a, a, a year ago uh, to, to really lead to where we are today of um, helping support seven startups really get the pathway to commercialization and help them grow and scale in the, in the space by throwing pretty much everything that Mars and, and the community has to offer at, at, uh, at these seven companies. Love everything that you just brought up. I'm going to take it back real quick to also just the actual physical footprint of Mars Discovery District. It just clicked that you guys are literally the Discovery District. That million plus square <laughs> feet that you have in Toronto, it might that is the district right there. So that is super, super cool. Now to the active mobility of it all. And might be a weird question or even a tough question to answer, but why would a business like Toyota want to support these active mobility businesses? What, it's a little cynical, but I guess what's in it for them? They're a massive behemoth company. They have that car business. I would not think that they would be in the startup game necessarily, but give me a little bit of insight there. Yeah, I, I, and I think this is really the, the distinction between working with the uh, Toyota business proper yep. And the foundation, the 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 foundation is really hyper focused on impact at, at the end of the day, and how how can they progress uh, different social initiatives um, uh, related to related to their business um, uh, in a meaningful way. And so uh, that that's where it's it's not like they're they're looking at areas completely outside of the the, the car business. If you think about people moving, and that that at the end of the day is is a big part of their their business, and and so that their their philanthropic initiatives enable them to to really help people get more mobile, 
Um, and so they they have two sort of main focuses in in the foundation. One is one is around this active mobility space. The other is around smart cities. Um, and and really what they found was they they run a bunch of uh, initiatives across the globe. Um, to encourage or spur innovation in uh, in these particular areas, which are uh, maybe traditionally underfunded. Um, and and what they found was it's great to spur innovation in that in that area, but what's next? and And that was the whole genesis of this idea of of, of what we call the mobility unlimited hub is is the what's next? how do we how do we create a community? Uh, around these uh, innovations that we're we're trying to grow and scale to actually help them make the meaningful impact that these com- these companies are trying to make, um, and so that that's the this mentality of a, a of a hub and a community. Um, in this hub, we have uh, uh, currently thirteen different community members, including University Health Health Network, their their kite uh, uh, arm, University of Toronto, Sheridan College. They, there's a full uh, uh, list around there, but it's it's how can the community provide the right supports for these particular technologies at this time, over an extended period of time. To really help them cross the chasm or or, or grow and grow and scale their 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 companies, super well put, Ian. And I'm going to bring it back to the Toyota of it all too, to maybe at not be cynical, but now broad to a fault. They're ultimately in the people business too. You know, they need to make sure that you had mentioned it earlier. We're all at some point in our lives going to face a mobility issue. It's kind of an inevitability. We're humans. We age. It happens. And Toyota is in the business of making sure that people can move like their cars in one direction. But even on the philanthropic and on the impact, social driven, that initiative, it all still is of a theme. You're making sure that people are capable of achieving what they want to do. You're empowering them. So I don't actually see that as separate from their larger commercial mission either. Uh, yeah. At the risk, again, of sounding too broad, hey, let's keep people moving. But Toyota, you, you want to do that. And yeah. well, I'll, I'll digress. I actually, I, <laughs> this isn't off the record, but I'm waiting on my Prius C to get delivered from Carvana <laughs> today, actually. It's been delayed three days. So nice. I'll have to get in touch with Toyota for me if um, it doesn't materialize. There you go. Me. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. Now, I want to dig into a little bit more about the Mobility Unlimited Hub. Could you give me a little more flavor around what being a member of that community looks like and maybe what's available to people who or businesses that do want to join that community? What can they expect to access from those resources like the University of Toronto and others? Yeah, to- totally. And I and I think it's important even, even to take a step back from that is we we started this journey with with Toyota Mobility Foundation uh with with a with some upfront research uh about a year ago to understand the challenges and barriers associated with innovating in this space and what is specifically unique to innovating uh, and creating innovative solutions in the active mobility space, because it is quite unique compared to, you know, your standard SaaS solution that's uh, uh, that, you know, companies are, are, are going and adopting the, and, and so we didn't look at it necessarily from the lens of, you know, what is it that the uh, a person with disability is facing? There's tons of research that already exists, like mounds and mounds of research that we looked through to help inform us from that perspective. But our angle was more, what is preventing innovation from happening in this space? And so, so that's that's where uh, we we sort of started on the journey, and that's what led us to say we need to create this hub or community where there's a variety of different services available um, in a time-bound uh, um, uh, space to, to really help move the needle for these, these companies that, that exist. And so we went through a process to actually design out a, a particular program. And it's important to note that at each step of this process, we involve persons with disabilities at at the core of this is sort of our our, our phrase that we've been using is nothing about us without us um, and making sure that not only the design of the program, but but the startups that we select are actually solving problems that persons with disabilities are are, are facing. That's kind of where we we started on that journey. And there's the thing that we learned along this journey is that these supports 
existed already in in different pockets. UHN Kite is doing a lot of work in this space. Sheridan College is doing a lot of work in this space. There wasn't there wasn't anyone bringing all of these different supports together, um, and and so that's that's where we see uh, the 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 need around here and the different community members where they can provide a bunch of different supports. Uh, an example is Sheridan College, where uh, their uh, Center for in Intelligent Manufacturing, where you know some of the startups in in this hub are are you know the next uh, the next generation wheelchairs. The challenge they're trying to get to is how do I get from you know being able to produce a hundred of these wheelchairs a year to how do I produce a thousand of them? And Mars won't support them directly on how do you manufacture these things, but Sheridan College can. And so how do we enable the 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 ecosystem so that um, and Sheridan College has you know matched funding that can that can help with those those projects and can also in, uh, encourage students to be uh, to be part of those projects as a as a bit of a talent pipeline uh, to these startups. So it's it's a win 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 for every everybody in this scenario. And so my message here is that this isn't a closed community that that only a certain few organizations are part of. We're actively out in the in the ecosystem looking for other partners that can provide supports uh, to these to these startups to really throw the kitchen sink at them. Absolutely. And I mean, you, you started listing some of the programs on offer that people can tap into with or without necessarily joining an incubator program. But I got to say, I love that, again, what is preventing innovation is where you guys led from. And a lot of that is just, again, getting it all in one place, making it all accessible, making it so that you don't have to jump through hoops. I'm thinking back to, we had a podcast with Neil Weitzman from Porch last week. Neil is the coolest guy, but I love how he's like, there are entrepreneur communities and there are immigrant communities. We're the only ones who are merging it together right now. And it's not the same ethos, but it's a similar ethos in that. Sure, to your point, there are resources for scaling, but there's also resources for actually deriving the innovation and for actually getting it to a place that it's workable, building up that MVP. You're bringing that middle ground and making it smaller so that it's not going to be as much of a journey to get from point A to point B in that context. And that is so, so cool. And I got to shout out to the R&D funding programs on offer in Canada. I wouldn't be on the Boast podcast if I didn't mention it, but you don't have to be part of a program necessarily to tap into some of the amazing funding that supports R&D, which is at the heart of the innovation that you guys are driving here. I mean, it is unique. It is technological uncertainty. It's tackling that systematic investigation. It's doing all the above. And that is stuff that the Canadian government wants to support as well. So even beyond the academic and institutional resources and the incubator and accelerator programs, there are just funding avenues in Canada, unique to Canada, even unique to Ontario, that teams can tap into that will help them get there. It's all about leveraging all of the resources within the community. And again, at Boast, we're happy that we can be a part of this community, even ancillary. But uh, it's amazing work that you guys are doing, and I'm just so happy to hear about it. And I'm going to be hearing more because we have people from the Mobility Unlimited Hub joining our podcast in a few weeks. But without spoiling those episodes and knowing that we're almost at time to, Ian, I'd love to know what some of the stuff that's on deck for Mars DD, specifically what's within your purview that we can maybe forecast over the next year, whether it's some of the businesses we're going to be talking to or even other exciting initiatives that you have on the calendar throughout 2024. Yeah, to totally, and and I I think just to your point, even around uh, shred and stuff like that, like the these are all important aspects of of commercialization at the end of the day and enabling commercialization, and the more visibility that we give to these startups and other organizations that these are types of uh, uh, supports that exist. The, the the better off that these companies are from from that perspective but what i'm re what i'm really excited about over the next year is uh in uh, uh, the, the the current iteration of the program is a one year program and so um uh, it, it's going until uh, uh may of next year we are actively looking at how do we turn this into a self sustaining program for the long run and that's what i'm really excited about building out over the next couple of months is how do we move this from an MVP uh, year one type of thing to how do we uh, create and self-sustain this community over the next five to 10 years? 
And I, I got to say, I mean, I'm here in Boston. Um, I'm the American on the Boast team, but we have a lot of innovation down here. It's very much within one field. It's very much within the biotech for the most part. We do everything. I'm not bad mouthing my friends here in Boston, but I am always so impressed by the innovation that's being driven out of Toronto. So I feel like Mars and you in particular, Ian, are the ones who will make this more than a one-year cohort in an ongoing self-sustaining innovation ecosystem. Just because the tools are there, the passion is there, it shows in how you're presenting all of this to Ian. So I am so excited to learn more about the great companies within the Mobility Unlimited Hub and also just all the great work that Mars is doing as we continue this relationship. But Ian, I cannot thank you enough for hopping on. This has been an absolute pleasure. I love pleasure. it. Thank you for having me.